So I bought this wand here and as you can see it has the correct looking LEDs. They've got a kind of gold border to them and that's how it really should look. But just because it looks like a real UVC LED doesn't mean it is. So how do we know? Well here's one of the things that the seller recommended. It's a UV test card that reacts and changes color when it's exposed to UV light. But this is actually a really bad idea because this is not specific to UVC. This will change colors under any kind of UV. Even if you put it out in the sun, it's going to change colors. I will prove that to you right now. So here's a UV test card. You'll see it says germicidal light, but actually it reacts to UV A, B, C, and D. So if we turn it over, this is the test area, the one that will change colors. We'll cover half of it with a box so that we can easily see the difference. And now we'll expose it to the LED wand. And as you can see, the test strip did react. There's a big difference in colors. But the thing is, this card will also react to other types of UV. If I cover this half and then bring in a black light, bear in mind this is not UVC, you can see the color changed also. The test card will even react to a regular halogen light bulb like this. And I'm sure you saw that, that part of it was much darker because of course there is some UV off put by this halogen light bulb. Even the UV tubes in this regular bug zapper will change the color of the strip. I'll prove this by covering half of the strip with my finger, turning on the bug zapper. We'll let it expose for, I don't know, let's just give it a few seconds. It's a little bit far away, so there we go. Let's turn that off. And there you go. The bit that was covered was white and this bit was pinky purple. Okay, so I've proven that these test cards are no good for proving this is UVC because they could put a cheap UVA or UVB LED in here and the card would still change color. So the next test I did was the green banana test. To make it easier to see on camera, we'll use black tape to cover some parts of the banana. We'll place the light close to the banana, but not actually touching it. Okay, there we go. So it's been around 24 hours and you can see that actually the UVC did have an effect. There's a small brown patch. I removed the tape and you can see that no other area was affected. It was really just this small patch that the light was hanging over. And that's an indicator that probably they're genuine UVC LEDs. But what we noticed is it was a very narrow area that turned brown, meaning these LEDs don't have a very wide spread. So that is something you have to be aware of. Just because it looks like it's spilling over, actually it's more concentrated in the middle. Unlike a low pressure mercury lamp, the more traditional UVC germicidal lamp, they have a very wide spread, which really does have good coverage. So that's just a little tip if you're going to use these LED products. So I thought to myself, okay, most likely it's genuine UVC. But how much power do they have? Are they really powerful enough to kill bacteria? So I was thinking, how can we test this? And then I came up with an idea that we'd use Petri dishes with a homemade agar nutrient base. We would swab them, try and grow bacteria, and see whether this was going to prevent the bacteria from growing. Now, here's the thing. I'm not sure how good that test is. I'll show you now how it was done. So we've called our Petri dish LW for LED wand. And this is how it looks. Of course, this is a homemade agar plate, so it's not completely perfect. There are some imperfections, but we'll be able to see whether bacteria grows on this. So we'll take our swab and put it all over the shoe, which is no doubt full of bacteria and we'll rub that all over our Petri dish. Now aside from covering all my skin and my eyes, I've also put down some black fabric, so that should hopefully absorb the light instead of letting it reflect back at me. Mm. 
my glove has been sanitized so let's close the petri dish and we'll just put this somewhere safe for a few days our next petri dish is x and this will be exposed to a regular uvc lamp one that we know works for disinfecting items so let's swab our shoe and then rub it all over our petri dish and I'll give you a close-up look before we expose it to the UVC because you will see there are little dots in there uh, that's because these are homemade they're not perfect they're a mix of different ingredients and some of them aren't mixed perfectly so yeah let's expose this to the UVC now because this lamp is much larger and a lot more powerful I'll only expose it for one minute So it's been four days and not quite the result that I was hoping for. If you see the little yellow specks inside, you can ignore those because they're part of the nutrient mix. But what you want to look at is this one here, this one here, and then this one over here. This is the Petri dish that was exposed to the LED wand. And this was the Petri dish that was exposed to the low pressure mercury germicidal lamp. And you can see that actually there's much less here. Again, ignore the little yellow specks because they're part of the nutrient mix. You just need to look at this one here and this one here. So definitely it performed better, but of course it's a much larger UVC lamp. Now in an ideal world, I could go to one of the universities and ask for their help. They have the experience, they have the equipment, they have the knowledge, or I could go to a commercial laboratory. But we're in the pandemic, right? So those options aren't really available to us. Plus, I wanted to come up with a test that people can replicate at home because there's so many products on the market and how do we know they're really working? Now, I know what you're going to say. Oh, you just look for the certificate, the FDA, the EPA, whatever, you know, these different certificates. That's a good idea, except many products from certain country are coming with fake certificates I know this because I've been contacting those agencies saying can you verify this certificate, can you verify this certificate and they've been telling me it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, it's not from us. So you cannot trust those certificates. They make those certificates so that if it gets stopped at customs they can say look we have all the paperwork, it's legit and they okay stamp, bring it in, no problem. So I'm sorry but you cannot trust those certificates unless it comes from a reputable company like Philips, someone like that, then of course you can trust them. But a lot of these are unbranded and you have no idea who made them. So yes, that's my test and as we saw there, the Petri dish that had three minutes of exposure to this LED wand, there was quite a significant growth of bacteria. I mean you can see it with your eyes, we're not using microscopes here. The one that went under the low pressure tube which is an 18 watt tube there was significantly less now i've checked other experiments online from people far more professional than me and what they've shown is that actually yes you may still see some bacteria grow even if it's exposed to uv but it should be much much less so i'm not sure is this a accurate testing method and something that i should proceed with or do you have an idea about how I can do this better? I guess at the end of the day, no matter what kind of UV device you're using, whether it's a bag with LEDs inside, or if it's a big tube light or anything, any kind of wand, just be careful. You still have to be consistent in washing your hands, wearing your mask, social distancing, and everything else. These are just tools that can, you know, help us, uh, you know, extra protection, but they're not a guarantee, especially if we don't use them under perfect conditions. You have to remember that before, these kind of devices were only really available to professionals. Uh, it could be a medical professional in a hospital, it could be for installation in an aircon system or some kind of air cleaning system, purification system. And now they're in the hands of the common person, they might not be used to their full potential. Uh, that also reminds us about safety. We shouldn't expose these UVC lamps to our skin or our eyes, whether it's LED or the regular tube. We have to be very careful. There's a lot of warnings about that. 
So yeah, let me know what you think. I'm willing to take on suggestions. I'm not saying that my Petri dish test is the best. I know that it's not ideal. We're not in a lab. I don't have all the right equipment. Even the nutrient solution for the Petri dishes is homemade. So it's not perfect, but I'm willing to take feedback, learn and improve for future videos. Thanks for watching.